Hey everybody, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day out there. It's the fool and the scholar welcoming you back to Bitch I Ain't Scared. The podcast where we talk about horror movies and horror-like things. And today our horror-like thing is your daddy. (laughs) How are we doing today? I'm doing great. Right now I'm eating a banana because it's about to rot. Yeah, we're recording right after work. We've had like this long day and time to get a little snack in before we start recording. But sometimes <laughs> we got to eat. Got to eat. Um, I had a chance to see It Comes at Night. That's basically what I do with my day. I I haven't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no, it's a good thing that you did get a chance to see the movie because I've been waiting to talk about it with you since I saw it last week. So... Um, by the time this gets posted, I'm sure this movie would have been out about two weeks now, so we'll definitely get into that. But first, I have a little bit of updated news for you. And for those who've been watching since day one, uh, I think it was like in episode three, we were talking about TV and the shows that we don't like. And part of that, we mentioned um, some TV movies that we enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And we got all giddy over Fall Into Darkness yeah. with Tatiana Ali. Now, I don't know why I did not do this sooner, but a couple of days ago, I was just kind of searching around, and I actually found it. On what? It's on YouTube. Oh, it is on YouTube. The whole movie. I don't know why I didn't look before, but I watched like the first two minutes, and it didn't cut off or get all weird, and it was still a clear picture, so mm. I am watching that soon (laughs) because I really want to see that movie but I thought I'd bring that up to you in case you wanted to rewatch it again because I'm sure it will bring back some memories I don't know if I should rewatch it because the only reason I hesitate I I really enjoyed it oh you don't want to ruin it so I'm like man I'll watch it and it won't even be what I thought it was (laughs) I'm sure it'll have some really cheesy lines and horrible production we'll see yeah but But, uh, yeah i wanted to bring that up to you and let you know that i actually found it so anyone who listened before and was curious about the movie we were just so excited about it's actually on youtube so i would check it out and let us know what you thought (laughs) awesome (laughs) (laughs) um i don't have any updates or news can't really think of anything i saw quite a few trailers today none of them were Oh, well, except for Wish Upon, which I'd already seen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make me want to see it because they just, they do too much. And I ignored Annabelle and um, I couldn't help but pay attention to The Dark Tower because I was like, oh my God. But you ignored Annabelle because Because I want to see see it. it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Not to be confused. I'd already seen like a half of a trailer, like two months ago or something. I was like, all right, that's good enough. Yeah. So so I just was like, Come on, man. Just start the fucking movie. Yeah. I don't want to... I don't want to do this. I love trailers. Some mm-hmm. some trailers do give a lot away, but I, I love mm-hmm. trailers. So over the weekend, I'm sure you saw the Black Panther trailer. Yes, it did. That was perfect. Yes. That's all I need. But we're going to get more. I There are people out there who still aren't sold. Watch them. They need spoken word to be sold on that movie. If they don't speak in this trailer, I don't know what it's about. Why am I going? 89 million views. Could you imagine if all 89 million people went and saw that opening weekend? That would be amazing. Like, Hollywood studios would lose their shit and be like, oh my god, we have to green light every single POC movie. Mm -hmm. We're going to cash in. I think I think this would be a, uh, is going to be a good opportunity to um, change the game a little bit. I mean, from the trailer, it looks it doesn't look as typical as the others, which is not a bad thing. But I mean, obviously. We're in, what, movie 14, 15 right now? I I mean, change the game just a little bit. And so we'll see. Yeah. We will see. Chad Bozeman. Or not Chad Bozeman. Chad Wick Bozeman. He can be my daddy. (laughs) Uh, We have um, a big thanks. Oh, yes. To give out as well. So our very own personal daddy at the Bitch I Ain't Scared headquarters. He's not here. Uh, We'd like to thank Mike for helping us to get started and you know we have some lovely equipment now so we hopefully sound better if you guys don't notice a change in quality from episode one to now 
I guess I just have to play with the knobs a little more. But yes, Mike, wherever you are, I wish you well and really appreciate your help and your enthusiasm in supporting us. Yeah, um, Mike is actually a really good friend of mine and um, he's always been... I've always been a big fan of his and vice versa, and, you know, if I had the means to support him in his endeavors, I would definitely take advantage of that, and so um, I really appreciate his friendship and for, you know, helping us out, and, uh, you know, without even getting a demo or anything like that, he was already just sold, do what you have to do, get it up, running, and so, yes, Mike, thank you, you're you're awesome. Thank you. (laughs) So, topic today. Fathers, we had a, a great Mother's Day special, and we thought we'd continue this sort of tradition and, and do some more holidays, and we have Father's Day coming up. Um, I believe when you listen to this, it'll be Father's Day, so yes. happy Father's Day again to all you dads out there. And to all you daddies who don't have any children, but you're supporting someone. <laughs> If you were a dad, would you show your kid horror movies? And if so, like what age would be like acceptable? <laughs> it's funny because it makes me think of it comes at night. Mm-hmm. Um, like what's acceptable for your child to be exposed to? Yeah. And what is not acceptable? Those were some like themes that I picked up on. But I would definitely show them things at a certain age. I'm not going to show my four-year-old something deliberately. Like sit down and watch Nightmare on Elm Street. It's yeah. good for you. No, 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 no. Um, Because, you know, especially in American society, we're more accepting of violence and gore and guns and blood. And then, you know, someone comes on and there's a titty out, you know, Super Bowl, Janet Jackson's titty. Oh, my God. Everyone lost their mind. You go to Europe and it's sort of the opposite. What was that movie called? Nymphomaniac. Okay. Oh, I mean, the the title says it all. Mm hmm. That was like A12. I think that means like a 12-year-old can get into the movie. Oh, wow. They don't need their, kids, they don't need their parents to, to buy them tickets. And then something that's violent is going to have a more restricted um, rating. Not here. Um, here, I mean, like I saw in the, in the Dark Tower trailer, I saw a man get shot in the head. I saw the bullet come out of his head. There are things that we're just more accepting of. So it's definitely something for me to think about. Because I, I saw things when I was four years old i remember seeing freddy on tv um it was scary but i wouldn't try to intentionally have my child watch violent horror movies because mm-hmm. you know like like i like from my point of view children's movies can be scary enough they have frightening elements already yeah so it's like let me dip my child's toe in the water and see how they are because they might not like horror movies they will probably not be my child that means that like <sighs> somebody else is influencing them too strongly (laughs) but you know i wouldn't want to traumatize them yeah i i I would probably start a little light i mean there are a couple of tv shows that have supernatural elements where it's not like strictly horror Mm -hmm. see if they get into monsters versus superheroes and stuff and if it's their thing work them up exactly yeah i just there's there's a lot of different things that they can get into Mm because you can appreciate the adams family yes and that's that's sort of a horror comedy thing you know they're creepy and they're kooky (laughs) but it's not going to be traumatic yeah so i think i think there's still ways for my children and me to bond over fun scary stuff without making them go to therapy (laughs) you wonder if there are like families out there like watching walking dead like every sunday night and making it like a thing and that is just as violent as ever yeah but it just seems like one of those popular shows where everybody in the household Mm -hmm. sits down and watches it less (laughs) together and it just depends on the kid because i think i mentioned this before You know, when I was in middle school, I had started watching horror films, and I liked them. But my cousins, who were five and six years younger than me, they were young. They were in elementary school, barely. They loved horror films. It just depends. I I mean, I feel that they're well-adjusted adults. I don't think they have any sort of mental instability. Yeah. Not much. I won't say who I'm talking about. (laughs) But... Yeah, it, it it really just depends on discretion. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I watched horror films with my family all the time. It just, when it came to sex, it was like, oh, God, such a different story. And that's, that's, it's not even a knock at my parents, really. It's just society, it's deemed more unacceptable to be naked and to be comfortable with 
your sexuality and to revel in it versus yeah. someone getting their head chopped off. I don't know. I don't know. It's very strange. But well, anyway. su- surprisingly, uh, my dad did not censor me when it came to television, which is probably why I'm into it so much is because I had freedom to just watch anything that I was curious about. Mm. And for some reason, I came out okay knowing what is make-believe and what is real. Um, but yeah, when it came to horror movies, I watched Tales from the Crypt all the time. Mm-hmm. And I had friends who were scared shitless to watch it with me. And I think it's because it was censored in their home. Yeah. And they're just not used to that type of exposure. I watched it all. And um, yeah, when it came to horror movies, again, like I said, my brother exposed me to it. And when I was in my father's household, he never really told me I couldn't watch A, B, and C. And I don't know if it was just to <laughs> keep me out of the way and, you know, babysit me in front of the two. But at the end of the day, yeah. I was able to watch whatever. I mean, we, we just didn't have that kind of household. And, you know, so I, I was kind of free to watch whatever I wanted. So that's awesome. Now that I think about it, mm. you know, that I didn't have such limited, you know, view of curiosity. I remember sitting in the computer room with my parents and it was more so my mom like my my dad would buy these computer games for her to play and i'll get more into detail when we talk about video games and stuff but she would play something called phantasmagoria sounds familiar that name Uh, it was like 96 i think i was that was still like i was just not quite into um I wasn't into it yet. It was still really intense and scary, but it was fun watching my mom play, and we would all watch her play, um, go through this game, and it was kind of violent. Um, This woman in this house, and she's seeing all these ghosts, and this man is torturing his wives that he kills, and he's feeding one of them entrails, (laughs) (laughs) and he's putting them in weird contraptions and murdering them, and then a demon comes out at the end and like, (gasps) ah! It was too intense. Like, I'm pretty sure there was one night where I saw the demon standing in the corner of my room. Because, you know, just hyper-imagination, sort Uh of. But I knew the game wasn't real. But still, it's like, it gives you nightmares. Um, So it just depends. (laughs) Had to go downstairs and watch Cinderella after that. (laughs) Cleanse my palate. (laughs) All right, so should we start with our theme today? I think we should. Okay. Um, let's see. Should we talk about the movie first? Um, yeah, sure. Let's let's talk about the movie. Okay. While it's fresh. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, speaking of fathers, It Comes at Night featured um, a movie about a father who needed to protect his family. This, this is one of those dads that I haven't seen on film in a while because... Usually when you see fathers in thrillers or horror movies, they're usually the naive ones. The ones who are on the side and they'll be called upon when things get tough. Either that or they're just drunk as shit or they're just naive. They just don't know what's going on and it's either the movie is about the kids who are getting through the turmoil of the movie or it's the moms who are you know being more involved or the villains as we covered last month yeah but the dads usually are are just kind of these people who are just kind of on the side not knowing what's going on and then when they figure stuff out then they'll put their muscles to use and and or they're just crazy as shit and they're the villains yeah but this father you know, he was the protagonist of the film, but he the, the story sort of centralized on mm-hmm. him. And uh, in the movie, which is what, post-apocalyptic, he had to protect his family from some type of virus that was going on around the world. Mm-hmm. And the people who may or might not be a danger to them since it's now a world of teach their own. Yeah, And so they've decided to isolate themselves and come up with very strict rules to make sure that they survive here on out and um okay so when i review movies i look at two different things i look at entertainment Mm -hmm. and then i look at the content which could blend in a little bit but i think that a content of a movie can be really really good and original and unique but still be boring or not entertaining or not appeal to a lot of people yeah And, um, you know, sad to say, for me, this was one of those movies. 
Um, for one, the trailer, I'm not going to say it was misleading, but I will say it left it up to some heavy interpretation. And yeah. most people took it the opposite direction of, I think, what what people are going to see. Uh, this, is, this is a movie based on human instincts, emotion. Um, it's also very symbolic in a way. You're yeah. not going to get some literal demons or monsters coming out of this. Mm -hmm. um, I won't spoil any more than that, but if you do expect some kind of monster movie, it's not this type of movie. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Yeah. Because um, there, there is a lot that is suggested. Yes, very suggested and, stuff. I mean, there was, there was a very key moment where I thought, how did that get into the house? Mm -hmm. I mean, who, who did it? Who yes, did it? Yes, so, I you know, it, 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 it leaves you to your own devices, but yeah, it was more of a symbolic film. It was very interesting. I can't say that I was scared. There were moments where I felt, you know, very um, tense because there was something happening and yeah. you didn't know what was happening yet. But the characters were all very engaging. There were actually two fathers um, yes, in this that's film. Yes, right. that's right. And they were both trying to cooperate. The families were trying to cooperate to work together and survive. So they were both trying to do what they thought was best for their respective families exactly. you know, when things got tough. I don't even know if I would call anyone the protagonist necessarily. I feel like the women were sort of off to the wayside mm -hmm. in this case. Um, but the eldest son of Joel Edgerton, he was very central because there was a lot going on with his... Yeah, we, we kind of saw the whatever. movie through his eyes yeah. as well as through the dad's, and um, a lot of the scary elements came with his... It came from the sun, yeah. His, and that's the other thing about it, is that I kind of lost the suspense from that movie towards the uh, second half of the film, is because we knew when to expect things to be creepy, and then at the same time, it was expected to be like a dream. So I didn't really get too intense because I'm just like, I'm sure he's probably going to wake up eventually from whatever is yeah. creeping me out right now. And it just kind of kept happening over and over again. So I was just kind of over it. I mean, and yeah, that's sort of the like the themes like it comes at night. So, I mean, he would have these nightmares at night when he was sleeping and then he wouldn't sleep. But I'm sure this is going to have to be talked about more because... I just, I know that there's deeper meaning to it. Like I said earlier, when you're, ex what you choose to expose your children to, and you know, when there's a death and he, the father needs his son's help in burying the body, and the mother didn't quite approve of that, but you know, he's 17 and it's all right, he can handle it. Mm -hmm. But then I don't want you running off by yourself. I don't want you hanging out with these people. You need to rely on your family. You can trust your family, but you can't trust anyone else. So it's, it's, it's all of these different messages that you give to your child and, and sort of like inviting society in and how, you're, how the world affects your child, what you want for them in the world, mm -hmm. because ultimately it has a, a much bigger effect on the son than the parents actually. I think the parents were already on edge, and then they relaxed, but, you know, that they were already scared. They were already scared out of their mind. They wanted to protect their son, and the son, I think, was sort of curious. He was, it seemed like he was sort of younger than he was, maybe because the apocalypse hit when he was, I don't know, 11, 12, so he didn't yeah. really have enough time to get to interact with other people. So this is probably his, his first time really seeing people. There was a, a line in the movie that um, I think any father kind of thinks of in the back of their head is, you know, if if I have to be the bad guy, I will be the bad guy. Yeah. And, yeah. He, you know, because there was a moment where he really pissed off his son and he did not care if he liked him or not. Yeah. He, his main mission is to protect his child. Yes. And he does not care if he ends up hating him at the end of the day. And yes. I think, I'm not saying that that's the right parenting skill, but at the same time, well, you you know you kind of have to make a decision. You want to be his friend. Mm -hmm. You want to be his father. And at the end of the day, you want him to live and yes. survive. And I think that that was a very big important component of this movie on how far this man was willing to go mm -hmm. to protect his wife and child. And if he needs to be hated on or be the bad guy, then he'll do that yes. for his family. Yes, and I think that was absolutely the right decision because especially in this situation there's some sort of plague yeah um 
and things are just not normal anymore. We can't just go to the grocery store. We can't just get in our car and do what we want. Things are very different. Mm -hmm. I want to protect you. I want you to live. I love you. If I'm going to be a little stern and strict and angry, oh well. Yeah. You're alive. <laughs> That's really all I care about. I, I definitely appreciated both the fathers. I mean, I mean, the other one was a little more mysterious. You know, not quite sure how to peg him. Yeah. He was probably the hot daddy. He was pretty. <laughs> he was pretty cute. I, you know, I admit when I first saw him, I was like, okay. And I've, I, I do recognize him from TV. In, um, but um, yeah, no, I'm I, not sure. But I, so at the end of the day, I mean, the movie does have a couple of creepy moments. There is a lot of wonder, a lot of curiosity. I think that the movie does keep your attention but i feel that the movie is going to be misread as something else the trailer definitely provided a, a different way of advertising what this movie is and so just be weary of that when you go and we would love to get into more detail with this but this is one of those movies that i don't think should be spoiled i think you should see it for yourself and um you know take it as it is um but there are many ways that this movie can be interpreted and that I think was his goal is to get people talking about it and this is also one of those examples where horror can mean more than just scares yes um, so at the end of the day I recommend it but from an entertainment perspective it was a little slow burn and um, again just wasn't really what I was looking for when I went to go see it so I will just leave it at that yeah, I, I agree. Um, here we are. <laughs> Agreeing Being again, pleasant yes. with each other. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get a guest host in here one of these days. Like, I will just go and not even be here, and they can just disagree with you vehemently. <laughs> but anyway, I also wanted to point out, um, I'm pretty sure it's her, Carmen Ejogo. I, I think that's how you say her name. Up. I, love I just, Carmen. I saw her name, and I was like, oh. I didn't know it was her. Yeah, I knew she was in this. That trailer was so suggestive. I was like, so she's having a big summer for horror anyway. She was also an alien covenant. That's right. And she's the mother, um, the wife to Joel Edgerton in this film. The acting was great. They I were really, all excellent. I really did like that. And too. the atmosphere was very creepy. I mean, very isolated. He the, was walking around at night in the house with that lantern. The house in itself it very is scary. a very labyrinth like mm -hmm. very, very like small it was, hallways. It was a character in itself yes. really. I mean it was all these black walls and the out, the exterior with these boarded walls. I mean it, it was mm -hmm. it was creepy. And even the shots like when they're running through the woods uh -huh. whether it was daytime or not. Yeah. Just the way that the trees are. Mm -hmm. I mean it was it was creepy. Yeah. So it was it was um, atmospherically, it was effective. Yeah. It's just, it didn't go quite where we thought it would. Yeah. But I still appreciate it. I still feel like all of the messages that I can get, I mean, I could even go deeper into it, talking about Joel Edgerton being a white father to a black son and trying to protect his son from society. And, you know, there's so many other things that we could talk about. So I thought that was interesting, too. I mean, <laughs> just it's funny. The whole time I was thinking, is he a stepdad? Because I don't know how that light skinned woman in this white man produced that dark ass child. You saw the Cosbys. I did see the Cosbys. The Cosbys weren't really that real to begin with. But anyway. they could be. Well, I'm People just saying. People could have different. Well, that's the thing. I just, I don't know the rules. I'm just saying. There are no rules. When he called him dad, I was like, yeah. what? No, I, I, it crossed my mind, too. I was like, hmm, were they? But I, no, I definitely feel like. And I think in character development, there is yes. a complete difference between the real dad and the stepdad and gaining that respect of somebody that is not actually your child. So it, it did cross my mind, their mm -hmm. dynamic relationship. Was it because it was relation or mm -hmm. so? Yeah, no. I definitely believe. That well, I mean, at the end of the day, the I biological too. parents. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, we'll got that out the way. Speaking of stepfathers, <gasps> I decided for this episode to do a little homework, and I actually watched for the first time, never seen these movies, the the original and the remake of the stepfather. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I thought I would watch that and, and talk about it with uh, the fool here, because he told me he did see uh, both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my 
Grandma Jeannie, who's no longer with us, but I'm pretty sure she liked the original Stepfather. <laughs> I okay. think she liked it. So um, I decided to watch the original first. And um, to my surprise, Terry O'Quinn, like, I had no idea I didn't he was either. the dad. That's so funny. He, I mean, obviously the movie was made so long ago. He just looks, he had hair. That was the thing that oh. just threw me off. He just Still, had hair. I just, I forgot. Yeah. I had no I idea. completely forgot. But some, some highlights of what I really um, picked out in this movie is the very, very first scene. You just see him being... You know, the dad getting ready for work, he's washing up, getting ready to kind of exit, and he walks downstairs, and his entire family is just dead on the floor, blood everywhere, he's killed him in all different types of rooms, and... The, uh. It just gets you right away. You've got this guy who can literally fix him some breakfast while dead bodies are surrounding him after he just took care of him, and he's literally out the door on his way to his family that he's already created. This man was a traveling salesman, uh, and he huh. he created a family with um, a mother and her daughter while still being married to his you know current wife. And I think he had three kids. And the minute they were just out of line, he just took them out and was like, "I'll just try again on this next family." It's fascinating. So here's my thing about stepfather is that we get no backstory or history to this man as to why he's crazy why he is raised the way he is with his morals and and um rules on how a family should be i mean he's very family oriented he's very old school but the minute you step out of line you know like you guys are you know you're not good enough and i'm just gonna you know who knows how long he's been doing this why is it so easy for him to get away with it like we get none of that we're just to accept mm. this man to be crazy well this was also originally it came out in the 80s i mm-hmm. believe so you know shit was just easier to get away with back then yeah um but yeah, the movie was okay. It, it took a while for things to happen, but I was like, he's got to kill at least two or three more times before, you know, he's found it out. I, there's a line in there that I think if I had watched it, you know, when it originally came out, would have made a bigger impact. I think it's, I don't know if it's up there with like the top best lines in horror or something, but for me, I thought it was actually pretty intense. It's towards the end of the movie when he is starting to unwind and he's starting to um, plan to kill his current family that he's moved in with because he's done with them. The daughter is is just over it. She does not like him. And any chance she gets, she disrespects him. And then he's just like, I'm done because they keep finding stuff out about me and, you know, this woman's, like, investigating me and all this stuff. And so I'm just going to move on. So he's starting to unwind. He's slowly just planning out his, you know, attack to take care of his wife and his daughter, stepdaughter. And he's like, we could have been the perfect family. You just wouldn't let it go. And you have this daughter who just can't, you know, follow the rules. And you could have been, you know, Mrs. So-and-so, and which wasn't his name. And so every time he goes to a different town and a different family, he uses a different alias. And he called out the wrong name. And his wife was like, who? And then he's sitting there and he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> who, who am I here? And I was like, Whoa. Like, he literally just outed himself, didn't even care, but he just admitted, he was like, Hmm. which name do I go by in this household? Like, that to me, like, if I was his wife, like, that would blow my mind. Like, what do you say to that? Check, please. Yeah. What did you think of this movie, this original? Um, it's, It's been a long time since I have seen it. I think it was probably creepy. Mm hmm. I was a little kid when that came out, and my mother had just remarried. <laughs> <laughs> what timing. So, you know, I figured my number was up. Uh, that is that is my association with the movie The Stepfather. <laughs> um, I think, you know, as a child, mm, things were rocky, but now that we're all adults, we're all great, and we all love each other. But that movie certainly didn't help. No, no. <laughs> it did not help. And then they made a bunch of sequels. Yeah, um, I didn't see part two, but I ended up seeing part three mm, when I was a kid. And I, I think that was just kind of age appropriate as to when yeah. it came out. I was just obviously old enough to watch horror movies, so I saw that one. Yeah, I just, I, I remember the second one. I remember people dying in the first one. 
Like I think he kills her sister. Yeah, he he kills um, the psychiatrist that the daughter was seeing because he tried Wait. to he tried to impersonate a guy who was checking out an open house because he was a real estate agent. Right, right. And then he fucked up and said something that didn't coincide with his backstory. So then uh, he got paranoid and just took a two by four and beat the shit out of him. My goodness, the whole time. Yeah, I mean. I don't know, and I'm pro- I probably am confusing one and two together. Okay. And I actually I did start watching the third one. I remember, but I fell asleep. Okay. I guess you can figure out how I felt about it. <laughs> but I, all I remember from that movie is the little boy kind of looked like me, or in my mind he reminded me of how I looked, and he had a pet turtle. Oh, I remember him. Yeah, <laughs> he turtle. does look like you a little bit. Um, and the. The Terry O'Quinn is not in this one. They probably couldn't pay him to, you know, do a direct video. <laughs> well, I, I mean, did he? I, he I, he had third? like, f- he got. Um, That's right. Yeah, a the, facelift okay, or whatever. Right. He had, yeah, he, he changed his face. So he changed his face character. so he could move on and really do it right oh, this well, time. The, well, if you okay, so this third one, they made sure they will never make a sequel with this character again, because the way they took him out was bloody and gross, and he's not coming back. He fell through a wood chipper. Wait. They had it in the oh, basement. Oh, in the third one? Yeah, in the third one. See, I didn't watch that. Okay, um, yeah, so then they were done. Yeah, they were Trilogy definitely complete. done. Yeah, they took him <laughs> out like permanently. Yeah. Just, from the transition from the first to the second, you actually don't know if he lived or died. And then the second one just starts with him um, recovering from the stab wound that stopped him and uh, then into the movie. And then he woke up in a psychiatric you know, mean, hospital. So then that's how he was able to do it again. What kind of fucking white privilege cisgender bullshit do you need to get put in a psychiatric hospital and then it's be able to do it insane. again he's no. not you know right in the head a lot and in holes. the 80s it was so easy to escape those I mean, prisons so. yeah <laughs> it was easy to get into them and it was easy to get out exactly oh he's crazy <laughs> yeah so the remake oh god i don't even want to god bless this remake okay so <sighs> god bless it well it's just i just can't believe they made it it's it's okay, not for sanctified. one, it's the same movie. Yeah, uh, and, and when you're saying, it's like, it's funny because I'm like, oh yeah, that happened in the remake. Yeah, yeah, that happened in the remake. He said that in the remake. Exactly, it's the same thing. I mean, so this, bad. okay, first of all, if you have seen the original and then you watch the remake, the first thing that you don't want to see is the literal shot for shot in the beginning. He's literally getting ready to go, <sighs> and then he walks downstairs and his family's dead. And I'm like, okay, here we go again. I still don't get any backstory about who the hell this guy is. Yeah. And then he just moves on. But this time... He didn't have a family already set, but um, all he had to do was go to the grocery store and talk to a woman, and then bam, had a had a woman just like that. And I'm like, God, if it was that easy, so charming. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's apparently really easy when you're a serial killer. So here's the other thing that I didn't like, and then it also just kind of reminded me of the original. He had such a big issue about these old school family like traditions, and yet Uh-oh. he kept choosing women with badass fucking kids, right. like real babies. Like, I did not understand why he kept... Towards the end of the movie, he sees another family, and these children are just running racket all through this store, just like a couple of heathens, and he's like, oop, there goes my next wife with some badass kids, and I'm just like, you're not going to get what you want if you keep choosing these horrible kids to raise. It's funny, I don't even remember the ending. So he apparently is alive and well. Yeah, yeah, he's alive and well, he works at a Home Depot, Uh, and then obviously saw a woman with two kids she can't handle. Oh, he's a lesbian now, I see. Um, But yeah, the remake was basically the exact same movie. I mean, obviously the dialogue and some of the dynamic between, you know, how they got together with the stepfather and everything. But it focuses on a boy, which in the original was a girl. And Mm. they were only together for like six months. And then like there was a couple of side characters. Do you remember uh, Paige Turco was in it? The second generation April O'Neil. Was she? Oh, she was her her sister. Yes. I was going to talk about her. Yeah. Because we just did our LGBT Pride episode, and that's she a was... very rare instance of a lesbian, like a, a legit lesbian That character. couple was very legit, and there was yeah. actually no reason and they, to And they didn't say have... anything about them. They were just there, they were and they were there. happy and yeah. in love. They were just a couple. Yeah, we, but we, of course, I think we met them at a party. She died. Yeah. And such a lame way. He every time he killed someone, it was so lackluster. 
Yeah, just, just like just sneaking around and. Oh my god! Well, the woman across the street who died because she wanted to be a nosy neighbor. And see, that's the thing. Stop being so damn nosy. Like, find something else to do. It because... was still lackluster. <laughs> it was just. I mean, I don't need people to be like put into wood chippers, but yeah. I'm just saying it was like, oh god, this is such a bore. So the other thing was that so Penn Bagley, who was very famous off of his Gossip Girl role, the man either was shirtless or had a tank top on to show his like muscles and chest and whatnot i mean he was practically naked throughout the whole movie i mean they clearly were doing a sort of sex sales things with <laughs> this movie i don't remember that and either. um oh, i forget the the girl's name um, oh isn't that um ba- 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 ba, what's her name nicole some wait oh no. never mind i thought it was it's old girl that's about to be an aquaman yeah, Isn't that yeah, her? yeah, yeah. I don't know why I can't think I of don't her remember name right her name. now. But, I mean, she obviously played, you know, sort of, like, this voluptuous, like, beautiful woman in the movie. And, yeah, I was just like, okay, we already yeah. know what your I target audience Cilla is Ward. on this I remember Cela Ward. I remember Cela Ward as the mom. She's cool. Yeah, I like her. She was, a, she was a good mom. She's good. Yeah. But, you know, and it's funny, because the trailer did hype up a lot of aspects. And you, like, that scene towards the end Amber where... Heard. Amber Heard is her name. Amber Heard. Yes. You heard? You heard? <laughs> um, where, because they're doing some sort of reconstruction on the house, yeah. and you know, like, the the saw is they dangling. Changed, they changed all of that. I that, mean, I remember, but yeah. it's like, they had it, but it's like, it was such a waste. Of, yeah. Because, like, they sold it. They sold it in the trailer, I remember. I was like, ooh. And I like Dylan Walsh. I mean, he was, you know, famous from Nip Tuck, and yeah. I actually like him. No, he's, he's a good actor. A good actor. Just, this movie was the same. It was I so wanted pointless. A different movie. So pointless. Yeah. I, I'm not saying all remakes are pointless. Some of them are scary and entertaining, and they're updated, and, you know, I definitely can enjoy them. But this one is just so stupid. There is no reason to do a shot so, for shot remake. So unfortunately, I'm not a really big fan of the stepfather movies. I can officially say that now. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're they're kind of a, a relic of the times. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't do like a stepmother or anything like that <laughs> ever. I feel like they have enough evil mothers. It's like why do a stepmother, you know? We can just we can find so many. Um I mean, there are other evil dads too, but We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Sorry, stepfather. <laughs> Rob doesn't like you. Better next time. <laughs> so should we talk about some others' dads in horror? Yes, we should. I, again, you know, I like to put these little cheeky quotes on because I think I'm cute. Who's your daddy? So, who's your daddy, Rob? Who's <laughs> the daddy that you would choose to rescue you from imminent doom now do i pick the dad that saved lives in the movie and i want him to save my life or i just want somebody to carry me into the sunset i mean isn't that the same thing look (laughs) i mean i'm gonna be real superficial so i actually i'll reference my um yeah we actually put up um a post for our fans to comment on and tell us about some dads in horror that they appreciate or remember from their favorite horror movies. And we got a couple of comments that uh, we can read off. Yes. So our good friend, Bradley97, Megan. On Instagram. She said the stepfather in the stepfather movies. <laughs> but she also said the dad in Amityville. So we can all appreciate Ryan Reynolds' abs. He worked hard for them. He was a sexy dad. He was a sexy daddy. Um, he was scary, but, you know, <laughs> he kept his shirt off. So it kind of took the focus away from the fear. <laughs> and yeah. My own original daddy that I will pick is, um, oh, my God. I can't remember his name right now. Jeffrey Dean Morgan from Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair I, enough. I feel like, you know, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, he's not my type at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but for some reason, I don't know, there's something about him. He He's he's one of those dads that, you know, family first, you know, likable later. He was an absentee dad. He took off when they were young. Wasn't around that much, but yeah, it was all for the greater good. Now I feel bad. Oh, <laughs> take it back. But So this... This dad I'm thinking about is actually from TV2. Uh, Dylan McDermott, American Horror Story. He was a whiner, but he was a sexy whiner. 
Yeah, yeah, he he had his clothes off all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I like him. Oh my god, I love that season. <laughs> yeah, I still. Your like wife that isn't too. home. You can touch me if you want. I won't tell. She was always just so done whenever she came in the room. <laughs> I know. It's Thursday. If I don't do it now, it won't get done till Monday. I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another dad um, that I think is just a great dad, but he's hot. Um, I can't think of his name, but um, the dad from The Mist. Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane, the yes. Punisher. Yes. yes. Um, I think he was, he was... He was a good dad. Excellent dad. I mean, like he said in the beginning, was just like, won't you walk a lady home? Won't you walk a lady home? <laughs> like, I gotta take care of my kid, lady. Right, and that, and that was Deuces. really his goal. Like, And that was, was his mistake. That... He probably should have walked her ass home. <laughs> <laughs> I know. God, that movie is such a kick in the oh face. Oh my God. Such a kick in the face. Um, so I've already mentioned this movie before, but... Um, Train to Busan. Oh yeah, the yeah. dad in there was top notch on taking care of his little girl. I like, and he's I don't know, he's sexy to me. I I I like him. Um, I didn't see it, so I can't. Yeah, it's, his name is Yu Gong. Like he, yeah, he was a dad. He you know had the business suit on, hey, suit Yugong. and tie, and yeah, he went through everything and paid the ultimate sacrifice to protect his kids. So kudos to him. Yes. And well, since we're on the subject. There are actually two other dads. So, Mr. Donald Thompson from Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, yeah. Our sheriff who, you know, went through, what, two movies to protect his little Nancy. And um, then there's Tony Goodwin from Last House of the, on the That's Left. That's right. Yeah, he they is went probably in. almost one of those dads of the years because... Like. The minute he found out about his kid, that man took every belief, every moral in his brain and threw him out the window. You, you, you'd you be really surprised what you're capable of when it comes to your family. And that was a test right there of what he was willing to do mm-hmm. to protect his um, to protect his daughter. And yeah. so, yeah, I think this definitely would be my parenting style. I'm, I mean, I'm already kind of like low key aggressive. I'm nice but even like at pride my boyfriend's like don't be jealous <laughs> i'm like well i don't want old men touching you <laughs> what can i say so you know when it comes to my kids i'm just gonna be really fucking annoying like, dad you don't have to walk me into school i do i do yeah i mean there's there's perverts everywhere son just just chill out it's fine <laughs> um oh yes and we cannot forget our good friend at James Ian X. I think that's how you say it. Um, he mentioned Craig T. Nelson from the original Poltergeist. That is a good choice. I actually didn't even think about uh, Although Craig T. Nelson. He says um, it's kind of his fault for choosing the house in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think he was also a good example of, because you were saying usually dads just are sort of like in disbelief. They're like, no, no, it's not real. I think it was a lot harder for him to accept what was yeah. going on. The mom was like, woo, young yeah. ho, like, look what's happening. Mm-hmm. So I think it was it was harder for him to really deal with it but you know he protected his family he did Um, he did do you think that horror is um like the suspense level is is amped up when it comes from the father i mean just look at movies like sinister with ethan hawk and um and you know the purge like if it comes from the father's point of view usually they're viewed as the masculine protector so do we get a sense of terror when it comes from them or is it only believable when the vulnerable mother or kids are being terrorized oh no i think it's definitely believable no matter what um i don't think it it discredits the mother role in mm-hmm. any way because either way i mean you know when you're fighting for survival and you're trying to protect your child i think most people can relate to that it's scary but i don't think and in my opinion i don't think that it has an effect like it's neither here nor there yeah for me okay yeah and let's see so um i want to talk about some crazy fathers out there there are a bunch of that I was thinking about through the week. Uh, I'll start small with... Lay them uh, on me. Lay them on me. So there's a couple, There's one from the anthology Creep Show. There was an actual storyline called Father's Day. Do you, right. remember, do you remember that one? Yeah, I think, I think I saw that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw it. Because what's his name? What's his name? 
Oh yeah, Ed Ed Harris. Ed was Harris. In it. I, can't, I knew. I, was like, I can see his face. Yeah, I knew yeah, that Ed Harris was of. in that that story. Yeah, but um, yeah, he was annoying as shit. I mean, can you imagine trying to take care of this old man? But he was not gonna let death like stop him. He wants his fucking cake. Gross. It's Father's Day. We all want cake. <laughs> but um, I was. Did you see Tales from the Hood? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do yes. you remember David Allen Greer? Yes. I mean, like, that was a big what the switch up. hell. Was that like I remember him from like Blank Man and In Living Color? He's in used to be, color. <laughs> he's you know meant to yeah. be funny, and they chose that him was, to be this. I mean, he did a good abusive job, abusive father, like and, except for that little that, his one move. Oh, he kept yeah. like yeah that palm to yeah, the that face palm, yeah, every he time. Wouldn't punch, he would just yeah. I was like, what? Uh, what is that? But, who decided? Like, whose choreography was like? But he he was oh my god some you know it was some it was kind of hard to watch mm-hmm. him do scary. that in front of the kid and then even when his body gets all twisted up he's I love still that story. like you this ain't over bitch like he still was trying to like grab out of I love that story that was I a very it. good story yes I mean I love the entire movie yeah um, no the movie's but great that anthology I mean it's it was scary it was very scary yeah um, to reveal that. This monster. I mean, I think he was a real monster, but mm-hmm. he. I don't know. It was. It was. Just and you know, amazing. maybe I'm thinking a little bit too much into it, but I think that when you've got a kid with such a powerful imagination to make his drawings real, that just shows how much abuse that kid was getting or witnessing. Yeah. For his mind to go that far to manifest and project his imagination and realism like that says a lot yeah about like the abuse that happens in homes and like i i just had to bring that up and mention yeah and mention him you know on that and then of course there's a good one there's the shining mr <laughs> jack torrance that movie is so long i know i just i really love the tv movie though um I love the tv i love movie. the tv so movie. that was gonna be the movie i was gonna bring up in oh, episode sorry. three mm-hmm. no, no 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 in episode three but oh, then oh, i thought oh. of you know yes, yeah but you know when we talk about stephen king we can definitely get yeah. more into it but yeah but i i thought jack it, torrance i thought it was better than stanley kubrick shining yeah i don't know no, some people are probably like what and i expected <laughs> you to disagree with me because <laughs> i so you know what till this day i am the only one who's either seen it or like it to be uh, honest with you i don't think anybody watched it yeah, it was but I loved like a it. two part. Well, they're yeah. always like two part miniseries. Yeah, it was King. it was three parts. Oh, it was three. Yeah, yeah, it was three parts. I don't remember watching it three nights. Oh, I committed to that. I at looked that age. so forward to this because aside from it, which I was too young to experience watching it when it aired, yeah. this was the first hmm. like mini series that I yeah. witnessed on television, and I was super excited. Well, I do to watch remember it. watching The Stand like I, vaguely well I watched that on VHS all the way through this was like TV where I felt like involved and mm. like I had to tune in each night to watch and I just yeah I do remember this one it set the bar because then after that they had another of Storm of the Century I hated that I like Storm of the Century okay that, 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 that's well, another example of a dad though it is um, that was an excellent father yes in that story I hated the story hated everything I like but that movie that father I mean he he was like it was rigged yeah, it was rigged and it was <laughs> bullshit. So I, I love that father. I do appreciate him. But the the shining is Jack Torrance. I mean, yes, that he's, poor man. He's crazy. Yeah, poor thing. Uh, I just don't touch me. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch you. I'm just gonna bash your fucking brains in. <laughs> or whatever he says. He I'm was sure pretty good in that role. I, he was excellent. You know what was creepy about him? was they would have scenes and they would be like very far panned out shots like you wouldn't really get a close up of him typing it would they would want to show you the big giant like acoustic room that he yeah. was in he just put a table in this giant room and then you just hear the typewriter but they never show you his face yeah and the whole time he's just stern typing like he's in the zone and the whole time he's just writing the same fucking sentence same and then he gets thing. up uses the bathroom gets a sandwich who knows and it was just so natural and normal for him like that to me was ah crazy yes and i mean a big difference between those i mean we're kind of getting into the specifics of the movie now but they chose to have an axe in that one because i guess it was scarier mm-hmm. and in the the um the tv movie it was a mallet which i'm pretty sure that was true to the book he had um because he hit some people with the mallet he hit the wife with the with the the mallet here's the thing rebecca de mornay 
<laughs> I know. Here's the thing about that. The mallet, I think, provided in the in the TV movie, by the way, they used a mallet because I think that was in the book. I think the so. The croquet mallet. And um, I, I like the mallet idea because it was uh, easier to project a little bit more violence. I mean, with an axe, you can't really do much with it. Like, once like, you hit somebody, it's done. It's done. But here's the thing. I saw the TV movie first oh, yeah. before the original. Mm. So when I found out it was the axe, I was like, oh, is it? Is that man going to get the axe? Because he got the mallet. So I was like, oh, I was yeah. so scared for him the and whole that time. Was, that was some bullshit, too, because he doesn't die. Yeah. They, but they decided to kill him in the movie. It's yeah. a magical Negro example, children, if you don't know about that. <laughs> um, yeah, that was just, that was stupid. I hate that. But I really liked him. So um, I have some more dads, but I'll, do, you, oh, do you have any? I, wanna... well, I have a dad Okay, who's sort of an abstract thing, okay. if you will. Father Death. Because <laughs> um, he's just present everywhere. Um, and it's, I I feel like that image to me is always like, you know, in the black cloak and mm-hmm. that, that skeleton finger yes. with the, the scythe. Yeah. And that's very present in the um, Final Destination films. More so in the first one. And the mm-hmm. other ones, people are just dumb and they just get each other killed. But in that first one, that fucker is there. He's there. You see him in the fucking toaster. You see him just so scary. Just around, just the um, wind, the the, the little, wind. Yes, the little you know images in the just, water. Yeah, and, the yeah. the subtle hints that he is there. Mm-hmm. It, but it's like it's him. It's Father Death. Yeah, <laughs> so scary. Another example. Um, I'm gonna bite off of you, and I'm okay. gonna say um, the T1000. Oh. From Terminator 2. Okay. Because he didn't father have a figure. father figure. Father figure, yeah, no, yeah. I, that, that totally works. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, it was sad because she was afraid of him and she had to learn to trust him mm-hmm. um, after what she'd been through and she respected him by the end of the movie. They did create he a small family protected, there. yeah, her son. He, he protected both of them. And even though he was a robot, I mean, it seemed like there was some sort of there was some sort of relationship where he he cared. He did care. It was like he cared for him, or at least we tricked ourselves into believing this robot cared for him. Mm-hmm. But you know, that was a sad, sad example. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are some honorable fathers that um, weren't really fathers in their whole career. I do have one other. It's more of like an honorable mention since we're getting to that. Okay. Um, Doctor Frankenstein. Yes. Ba da ba ba ba. That is true. Yes. yes. He created his own son. Didn't need a woman to do it. He did. <laughs> he did. See? Yeah. No, mm-hmm. that is that is a good one. Um, but yeah, other other icons. Freddy. Oh, yeah, Freddy. Freddy Krueger was that one time. a father that one time. <laughs> so weird. Whichever, you know, you want to believe. I mean, it wasn't Wes Craven's idea, but yeah, they, yeah. they gave him a child. Yeah. And um, Charles Lee Ray, Mr. Chucky himself, had a kid, too. Oh, right. That's right. They had they had their baby. So yeah. awkward. <laughs> so, <laughs> that movie. I couldn't get through it. I was like, <laughs> I can't do it. I like Brian Chucky, but that was just too much. Yeah. Um, oh, another one. Maybe you have it on your list, but um, Candyman. He what? Well, yeah. I mean, but do they was, talk about it? They I talk mean, about him being I mean, a yeah, father. I mean, I mean, that's the whole reason there's a sequel. But I mean, but it was his grandkid, right? Or yeah, but he had to have a child. True. I'm I, just saying. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, that works. We just get works. into all sorts of different things because his daughter passed. Yeah. She was living back in good old Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the dad from Frailty, Mr. Bill yeah, Paxton? I do remember now, that. That movie. is a dad, man. That's a good twist. That to me was one of those movies where. I think was very traumatizing for a child to not only defy his father, but to make a decision that, you know, because, you know, blood is thicker than water and all right. that. And, you and you know, he, he's your authority figure. He's the one that raised you. There, there was this sense of, like, trust that, was, that needed to be there and there was no betrayal around it. If your dad told you something was going on, you believed him. And it took everything in that little boy's mind to defy him and and you know do the things that he was doing. Yeah. To to live because he had to go with his own gut and instinct that his dad was crazy and needed to be stopped. And I thought that was 
real tough and mm-hmm. heavy on on him, which is probably why the movie ended the way it did. Yeah, I think it definitely had. But a father, it, I think that that shaped him. Yeah, a father that has an influence, him and who he was at the end. So yeah. I mean, I thought that was a great movie, by the way. Too. No, I like yeah. that one. That was that was a. <laughs> but yeah, that was a, that was a good one. I like that. There, there are some. Uh, there is one movie that I have not seen yet, and I don't know why. I just really need to sit down and watch it. Um, it's called The Loved Ones. This movie keeps popping up on a oh. lot of missed horror movies that everybody should be watching. Is that the one where the girl is trying to? take a guy to prom yes oh, exactly okay. so the dad just kind of you know wants to be there for his daughter and he kidnaps this boy that his daughter has a crush on brings him home and has their own little private prom at home for his kid helpful i no, i heard this movie is really good and i really just need to sit down and watch it but he's probably oh and then i also never seen this movie but i wonder if you know, it's really good. Did you ever watch Neighbors with Randy Quaid? No. <laughs> I heard it was like some kind of like cannibalistic movie or something. I don't know. But mm. there was obviously a little boy stuck between these two parents who were crazy as shit. But it was all that suburban life, like cover up or whatever. But I never saw the movie. I don't, I don't even. I mean, when you say Randy Quaid, I'm like, yes, I know Randy Quaid. Mm-hmm. And this movie sounds familiar because I can picture him. But I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Um, something else that you just made me think of. I don't know how you did, but it popped into my head. Um, so in the Vampire Chronicles, in the novels and in the films, mm-hmm. uh, Louis becomes a father to Claudia, um, the little girl vampire that um, he and Lestat sire together, basically. Um, so, okay, and because <laughs> I haven't read the books, you're talking about Kristen That's, Dunst's character. Kristen okay. Dunst's character. Okay, very good. So I'm kind of like referencing two gay dads. <laughs> 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 but it's, it was really sad because he he loved her. Yeah. Um, you know, and then she's a vampire for like 80 years or something and she's like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I'm a woman. But that was that was a really sad um example. I well, keep coming up with these sad examples. I know. I know. Sorry. Wanna... <laughs> Fatherhood is sad. <laughs> what about the father figure in Chainsaw Massacre? Sort of that guy who was just kind of like leading the family like he kind of well. So you remember from the first one, he was the one just beating the other two into submission. Oh, him! Yeah, yeah that was. I don't know how I feel about him. I and mean, because in the remake, the I felt like the sheriff was sort of the. Well, and, and, you know, I was going to bring up the sheriff in the in the um in the remake too. Just yeah. that he was heavy, Mister Arlie. Um, Arlie Ermy. Ermy, yeah, no, yeah, those yeah are some he was pretty intense. Terrible fathers. Yeah. <laughs> It's not normal, guys. Don't don't do that shit. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we could talk about Rosemary's baby, Satan. He's such a great father. <laughs> oh yeah, um, a lazy one at that. I mean, lazy. Ass. All he does is like impregnate him, and then he just takes off and mm-hmm. has all of his servants do all the work. I liked the TV movie with yeah. um, Zoe Saldana. Don't kill me, horror fans. I have not seen Rosemary's baby yet. I mean, look. I need to I need to watch it. Well, I heard it's a very you got a classic life, you movie. got a lot of life to live. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you got stuff to do. No, I, but I did hear it was a really good movie. I I do want to see it one day. What did you do to him, you maniacs? <laughs> she was doing way too much. Um Mia Farrow. I feel like she was just doing way too much. <laughs> way too much. Oh man. Can you think of any more? Is there any more that we missed? Um, God, what's the actor's name? <laughs> I'm so terrible when I'm trying to think of actors from the past. So in the original Omen, I mean, you could talk about um, Lieb Schreiber in the remake too, but in the Omen. Oh, okay. You know, like he was torn between protecting his son and then I have to, I have to kill him because mm-hmm. he's fucking evil. Well, um, just just compare and contrast with um, our Mother's Day special. There wasn't a lot of like fathers who, I mean, they the fathers were present, but they weren't really like the central of of the mm-hmm. of the you know the problem that was happening yeah. they were always a very supportive role to the mom mm-hmm. and i think it's more of i guess people believe more in the mother in maternal instinct than the father paternal. probably i think it's like fathers are practical yeah they're there to set the rules and you know it's like lights out you know lights out by nine yeah where mothers are more nurturing oh it's okay honey you can talk to me and um, i think they're just more featured i that think because even um the don't be afraid of the dark or something you remember what I'm talking don't about? Don't Look Now or whatever? Would, no, no. It was a movie with Katie... Oh, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Something yeah. like Katie that. Katie Holmes, right? Katie Holmes. Yeah. She was the stepmother. 
Yeah, but she was more nurturing to the child. She then the, yeah, was, the even though was she was like, on, I don't yeah. know what's going on. Something's going on with her. You know, maybe you can't see it and I can't see it, but she is freaking out. We need to take care of her. And he's like, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. So it wasn't until like uh, some shit actually happened that he was like, oh my God, there's creatures in this house trying to kill my daughter. Guy you know? Pierce was the dad. Yeah, he was yeah. so useless. <laughs> Fucking useless in that movie. <laughs> Katie Holmes had to like do everything and mm-hmm. she paid the ultimate price. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's not a great movie, so I'm not really like spoiling anything. So hey, I wasn't a fan either. It was it was okay. The it was kind of scary. It was intense because it was a a little kid. Yeah, whenever stuff happens to kids, it, I think it just raises the bar a little bit because it's like oh my god. Yeah, um, like this is totally off the wall, but in the movie Mimic, when the little boys get killed, it's like oh my god, but they're kids. That was terrible. <laughs> yeah, you can't kill children. It's horrible. <laughs> I mean, you can't show it. <laughs> that's just how I feel oh uh, yeah those are all the dads I can think of okay. um, I didn't say before so I'll, I'll mention all of my paternal figures in my life like I said I mean my, my mother remarried and I don't ever say these things explicitly out loud um, I just call him my dad um, so I have a relationship with dad who's my biological dad I have a relationship with my dad who is my stepfather but I don't differentiate a lot also, my Uncle Lonnie was a big paternal figure in my life growing up. He's the one who had the um, the Dream Child poster in his uh, room. <laughs> okay. He's a big Freddy fan. Uh, I he see. loves Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, he loves Predator. So, you know, uh, these men influenced me heavily growing up. I mean, my, my stepdad, he loved bad horror movies. He loved the sci-fi channel. Mm-hmm. He loved demonic toys and um, Doll Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, which actually, I do like demonic toys. The original. I love one. demonic toys. So bad, but I like it. Um, my uncle Lonnie. I remember he'd always treat us to movies. And it was like, oh god, we feel bad. So I remember once uh, my friend Brittany Lee and I were like, we're gonna buy him movie tickets. So we're gonna get there super early. And when he got there, we're like, ha ha, we already bought him. He's like, oh, you guys. And we took him to see Alien vs Predator Requiem. Okay. Um, just because, you know, we, we all like Predator. Yeah. And then after we walked out, he's like, hmm. He just, like, is walking around the movie theater lobby, and we're like, what is he doing? Are we going to leave? And he walks across the lobby into another theater, and we're like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> we better follow him, because we look really suspicious. So we went to see I Am Legend after that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Two for one. Oh, man. It's the only time I've ever snuck into a movie. Really? <laughs> oh, God. Uncle. That was my life <laughs> when I was in high school. All we, all I did was sneak in, because couldn't uh, do anything else. We weren't old enough yet. So. It was awesome. Thank you, fathers. Um, you made me crazy. So we are going to close out our show with a bitch, really. This week is from The Stepfather, actually. Oh. Unfortunately, Wait, it's which not one? from the original. No, the original. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's. Not I was some... going to say, bitch, really? You remade that movie? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, um, it's not from the father. It's actually from the character who follows or tries to search for him the entire time in this movie. The original family who died in the beginning, mm-hmm. the mom had a brother. And the brother uh, found out about the family dying, and mm-hmm. he spent his entire character in the movie trying to hunt this man down because the stepfather was brilliant at covering his tracks. Right. There's no record of him. He paid cash and everything. There was just no paper trail. Nothing. Aside from the main story, we would always, you know, go. Meanwhile, the brother is getting one step closer to finding him. He spent 90 minutes, not literally, but throughout the whole movie searching for this man. The minute he gets into the right town and to the right house, he's not home. So he goes off, does a little bit more research to figure out if this is the right David Blake that they're looking for. And then when it clicks in his head that that's the right guy, he goes right back to the house, bangs on the door, trying to protect them. Because this is happening at the very last minute. The family's about Uh, to get attacked. Oh, okay. And he just... we're like, oh, he's going to get there in the nick of time and save the day. So he gets there. He opens the door. I don't know exactly how much, how close he was with his sister because 
he opens the door and looks at him as if he's never seen him before in his life. Oh, it's like Clark Kent putting on glasses and he's a completely different person. He doesn't recognize him, but they're slowly talking inside of the house. I think he recognized him right away. The stepfather recognized right. him and called him out. And the brother just kind of stood there. I'm like, punch the shit out of him. Do something. Like, why yeah. are you just standing there? But this is where the bitch really comes in. He's already, like, has blood on his hands for punching the wife in the face. He's in the middle of trying to get to the daughter. And, like, I think she stabs him with, like, glass or something. I can't remember the timeline exactly. But he's got blood on his face already or in his hands. And then the brother's like... Is that blood on your hands? As if he was clueless that he wouldn't have blood on his hands. He just killed an entire fucking family, and yeah. you're surprised he has blood on his hands. The stepfather takes one lunge with his knife and kills him. He showed up for nothing. Bitch, really? Did you really spend the entire movie searching for a man who I thought in your eyes needed to die on sight, and then you get him... And you do nothing, and then surprised that he's out there with blood on his hands killing more people. And it was such an easy kill. Yeah. It, it, it was ridiculous. There was no point wow. in his character whatsoever. I'm sorry if I'm being really loud in your ears. This made me so angry when I watched this movie. I was like, what a waste. Well, fathers and daddies alike, happy Father's Day. We'll catch you next time on Bitch, Bitch I Ain't Scared. scared.